Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about something very specific, but hopefully a video that will help you out. How to jack up the front end of a Hyundai Elantra. This is helpful if you ever need to do, you know, work on the front end of the vehicle, whether that's an oil change, cooling, and other things like that. So we'll go over a lot of basics to get started, and then I'll show you the actual process. So without further ado, let's go over some quick tips and tricks, especially as we talk about the important tools that you might, you're going to need for this process. Uh, floor jack jack stands and wheel chocks. So let's talk about each of those just to give you an idea in case you're not familiar. All right, so let's talk about some general safety tips whenever you lift up any sort of vehicle. First thing, we always wanna jack on a flat, even surface just to make sure that the car can't slide or roll or anything like that. It's always good practice to jack up the vehicle on a flat and even surface. The next thing is we wanna use jack stands. Jack stands are built to stand it in place and hold the vehicle. So while a lot of people might use the scissor jack that comes in your vehicle, or they'll use just the floor jack to lift up the vehicle, definitely invest in good jack stands because that's what holds the vehicle in place as you do the work underneath the vehicle. Next thing is you also want to inspect the jack stands. So what we're looking for here is we just wanna make sure that the seams are intact, the welds look good all around the jack, there's no chipping, there's no breaks, Make sure the teeth look good because again, this is, this is between you and the vehicle. So you want to make sure that the jack is in good condition and can support the weight of the vehicle. Importantly, another safety tip is you also want to double jack your vehicle. So in addition to using the jack stands to hold up your vehicle, I also like to use the floor jack to also uh, be underneath the vehicle just in case my jack stand fails, I have another line of insurance. Additionally, a third level of insurance is if you're taking out the wheels and working maybe on the struts or brakes or something, you can throw that wheel underneath the vehicle. So again, that gives, the vehicle won't fall on you or completely on the ground. So again, three easy ways to add some insurance to this process. Next and uh, hopefully fairly obvious is to also apply your e-brake in your vehicle just to make sure that the car doesn't roll as that usually locks the rear brakes of the vehicle, especially if you're working on the front. Now let's talk about wheel chocks. So in addition to uh, lifting up the vehicle, you also wanna make sure that your car doesn't roll by applying the e-brake and using wheel chocks. So let's talk a little bit more about those. So here we have our wheel chock. As you can see, there's a handle side, there's a flat side, and there's a rib side. I know there's a lot of debate about which side you actually put on the ground. What I've always gone by and what's worked for me is that the flat side, uh, you'd use, it all depends on the surface, you'd use on a flat, even surface, whereas the rib side you use on something that's chipped or a little bit more rough. So maybe like if you have uh, a lot of rocks in your driveway, maybe if the asphalt's falling apart, that's when I would use the ribbed end. So as you'll see in this video, I use the uh, flat end because again, more surface area equals more friction, therefore the chucks will be less likely to, to move on you. And obviously the surface I'm working on is a very clean, smooth uh, garage floor. So now most importantly is finding and understanding how to use the jack and the jack stands. Now as you probably have seen, these have weight ratings. You can see here the floor jack has a three ton rating and my jack stands have three ton ratings. So what you wanna know is the curb weight of your vehicle. And what the curb weight means is the weight of your vehicle just as it is with all the you know seats, uh, you know everything as it is, how much does the vehicle weigh in total? The Hyundai Elantra uh, GT, so my 2013 Hyundai Elantra GT weighs anywhere from 2,045 pounds to 2,084 pounds. So if you didn't know, a ton is 2,000 pounds. So my vehicle is about uh, a little, yeah, about uh, a little bit less than a ton and a half. So as you can see, these jack stands and jack are obviously overrated for my vehicle however for me personally I you know jacking up your vehicle is inherently dangerous so I don't want to you know risk my life for you know the sake of money so I actually prefer to get jacks that are higher have a higher rating and in addition I don't know if you knew this but newer jack stands even though it says three ton that's because they're rated together so it's not like one jack stand can carry 3,000 or three tons by itself, 6,000 pounds. It actually is the combination of the two jack stands working together that gives you that three ton rating. So just be aware of that, that you, it's not that one jack stand can carry three tons, it's the combination of the two together. 
So just be aware of that. Um, and I know some people might say, well, hey, three tons is definitely overrated for lifting a vehicle with a floor jack because you're only lifting maybe a quarter of the vehicle, maybe half the vehicle at a time. You're not lifting the entirety of the vehicle. Again, um, I also wanted to shop smart because I also have a Jeep. That one does weigh more, so I didn't want to have to get two floor jacks. So that's why I just got a bigger one. I got a really good deal on that floor jack. So it's important to look into the curb weight of your vehicle before you invest in jack and jack stands to make sure that you're safe and relatively safe, I guess you could say, as you work underneath the vehicle. Next thing I'll say is just be aware of the different types of uh, floor jacks out there. As you can see, this one has a low profile. You can see here it kind of smooths out. Some jacks don't have that. Some are pretty boxy. So just make sure that whatever uh, height the jack rests at will work underneath your vehicle. The Hyundai Elantra sits a bit lower than my Jeep. I think it's only a few inches up, yeah, a few inches off the ground. So that's why I wanted to make sure that the jack height here, so from here to the base of the jack, so the pad here to the base of the ground would be able to get under my vehicle. Because if you can't get the jack underneath your vehicle, then what's the point? So just look into that, see how um, the height of your vehicle, just so you know if, a, if you're going to need a low profile jack like this one, or if you can get one of the regular kind of more boxy ones that aren't low profile. Those ones usually run a little bit cheaper, but again, I had to get the low profile one so I, I could use both my Jeep and my Hyundai Elantra with this jack. So hopeful, hopefully that's a helpful tip there. Another thing you should also look into is depending on the kind of work you're doing, uh, all jacks that are floor jacks when they're uh, sold and even uh, the jack stands should tell you their base height and their max height. So just be aware of that in case maybe you're lifting up a huge lifted truck. I mean, some of these jacks might not do the job for you. I mean, granted you could throw maybe a four x four on the, the pad there to give you some more lifting, but just be aware of that, that these jacks do have a max and min height both stands and the floor jack. So just double check on that, that will work with your vehicle. Again, for the Hyundai Elantra and GT or the regular one, uh, I would say definitely get a low profile one, especially for the way I jack up the vehicle. Lots of ways to jack up a vehicle, but for the way I do it, the low profile one works perfectly. And again, I'll show you that upcoming. So one more very quick thing, I'll probably make a video later on about all about jack stands and floor jacks, so you can learn a lot more about those. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. But I just wanted to make one more important note here that um, obviously that you can get smaller jack stands. They go as small as I think like a, a ton and a half and they go all the way up to sometimes I've seen 12 ton jack stands. So these things can get huge. And of course you can use whatever one you want in your vehicle as long as it can support the weight of your vehicle and, are, and using the tips and tricks I suggested. But also sometimes for your work, it's nicer to have those big jack stands so you don't have to lift them as high. As you can see here, these two jack stands uh, would work just fine underneath my Hyundai Elantra. Again, it's a ton and a half, the whole vehicle. But if I was needing to lift the vehicle that high, where I was using that jack stand, I would actually prefer to use this six ton jack stand because it's gonna be a lot more stable than something like this that I've had to lift up in the center of gravity's uh, not as good. So, again, um, it's okay to you know get bigger jack stands so that you don't have to lift it as high. For me, I don't like to lift the jack stand to this highest height because it gets unstable that way. So just a quick safety tip there, and let's get started with how to jack up a Hyundai Elantra. So we're gonna come into the car here, and in the center here, we're gonna pull the e-brake, and that is gonna help lock the brakes because that'll bypass the hydraulic braking system within the car to make sure to help the car not roll. Now. Time for the wheel chocks. Next, I'm gonna get my jack stands nearby where I'm gonna jack, uh, put the jack stands under the car. Here I'm gonna use the pinch weld and I'll show you all this once I actually get there. But I just like to have it close by because once I get the floor jack underneath here, I'm gonna wanna put the jack stand underneath. All right, so here we are underneath the driver's side front door, obviously the driver's side door. There's that driver's side tire. We come underneath, here's the pinch weld. This is where you'd, on a lot of cars, honestly, you'd put the scissor jack, that's the emergency jack in the car, jack up the car. 
But since I'll be using the floor jack, I'm gonna look for another sturdy spot underneath the car. And as you can see right here, this metal plate right there, I believe that supports the transmission. Um, I'll have to get a closer look here in a minute. And I'll show you when I'm actually underneath the car where I'm jacking it up. But you wanna use something solid, metal, and sh that can support the weight of the car. So that's what I'm gonna use. And let's get the jack up over there. And just like that, let's jack away. Now, get our jack stand under the pinch weld here. So as you can see, we'll get it there and then we're gonna Lower the jack so that the jack can rest on the jack, or the weight of the car can rest on the jack stand slowly. And just like that, that's what we're talking about. And now, we're going to do the same exact thing on the other side. And just for extra safety, I'm going to keep the jack still pushed up against there, not pushing it far up so that it's taking the jack off the jack, or it's taking the car off the jack stands. So it's actually resting on both these jack stands here and there. But I also want a third layer of security by having the floor jack resting on that plate, that jacking point. So now we can work onto the vehicle. So it's not a bad idea also to give a car a firm shake. Um, just to make sure it's not going anywhere. Better to have the car fall now rather than when it's on you, but these are all some good general tips. If you're taking off the tires, also throw those underneath the car because better to fall on the car rather than you. So I'm working on changing the oil here, which I've got a video here linked in the top right if you want to check that out, how I did it without jack stands before all this. So there's the oil pan right there. Going back here, you can see here's this large frame uh, behind where I guess the front of it looks like the transmission and then back here you can see where I got that supporting where I jacked up the car so okay now you'll just see it from this angle as I jack down the car Alright, so here we go. Key is keeping an eye on the foot of the jack just to make sure it doesn't get centered or wherever you're trying to support. Get it up enough that it clears the jack stand. Looks like we need just a little bit more. Get our jack stand out. And then the key is slowly when going down. Just turning your handle ever so slightly. And as you can see, the car just drops. And I'm not gonna tell you what jack you need to buy or brand or whatever, but I can say for sure, at least if you jacked where I did, Low profile jack is definitely something you're gonna need. Not that much clearance underneath here to get to kind of have any of the actual structural supports for the car. So that's why I invested in one of these low profile ones. And yeah, that's how you jack up the front end of a Hyundai Elantra. Questions, comments, let me know below. Appreciate you watching, catch you in the next one.